And in this video, we're going to go through the some of the 10 most basic functions that you probably will ever encounter throughout any mathematical course. There are definitely some other functions that are really common that we're not going to discuss in this video, but we will bring them up later when we discuss each of the functions in detail. So let us look at probably one of the most basic functions there are. So function one, which I'm going to abbreviate as f of one of x, this is equal to c, where c is any real number. So you can say f of x is equal to two, three, four, or five. So when x is equal to five, it doesn't really change what this number is, right? So we have f of x, f one of x is equal to say three, as an example. So when x is equal to one, y is equal to three. When x is equal to two, y is equal to three. When x is equal to any single number that you could possibly say, y is equal to three. So if that is the case, then what does the graph of this relation look like? So we can let this be the x-axis and this be the y-axis as usual. And then we can start plugging in a bunch of numbers for x and we get the same exact y value of three. So in general, the graph of y is equal to c is just a horizontal line. So what would the domain and the range of this type of function be? So the domain of f of one is going to be equal to all real numbers. And the range of f of one or f one is going to be just equal to the number c. So that's the first basic function. The second basic function, is, which I'm going to call f2 of x, is going to be equal to just x, so the variable x. So when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2. When x is equal to 3, y is equal to 3. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. And you may start seeing the picture. So we can extrapolate all of these points, and we get a line. So again, this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. So what would the domain and range of this relation be? So the domain of f2 is gonna be all real numbers because it goes all the way to the left and all the way to the right. And the range of f2 is gonna be equal to minus infinity to infinity or all real numbers. Some people rewrite this as all real numbers because it goes all the way down and all the way up. So that's the domain and range of y is equal to x. The next most common function that you may see, f3 of x is equal to x squared. So when x is equal to zero, what is y gonna be equal to? So when x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero squared, that's zero. One squared is one, two squared is four, negative one squared is one, and negative two squared is four. So if you connect all these points, you get what we call a parabola. So what is the domain of this parabola? So the domain of f3 is also going to be all real numbers because you can square any number and get a number back. And the range of f3 is going to be, well, when you square any real number, you only get zero and any positive number. So it's gonna be zero to infinity. You don't ever get negative numbers out of that. So another function, f4 of x, so if we just increase the power to three, then we get x cubed. And I leave it to the reader that once you keep a bunch of numbers, you'll get a curve that sort of looks like of this little S type of shape. So also one can see that the domain of this function is going to be all real numbers. And the range of this function also will be all real numbers. All right, great. So let's look at another class of functions, which we will call the radical functions. So f5 of x, you can say, we can define it to be equal to the square root of x. 
So remember, you cannot take square roots of negative numbers and get a real number back. Uh, those will be called uh, complex numbers. So let's assume x is only a real number here. So the square root of 0 is going to be 0. The square root of 1 is going to be 1. The square root of 4 is going to be 2. And we sort of get this type of shape. So this is going to be the square root of x. So we see that the domain of f5 is going to be equal to any real number as long as x is positive. And the range of this function is also going to be only positive numbers as well. So that's going to be 0 to infinity. The next function we can look at is f6 of x. I'll call this the cube root of x. So again, I leave to the reader to verify that when you take the cube root of numbers, which is the opposite of cubes, then you'll get a graph that sort of looks like that. So we can say that the domain of f6 is the same as the range of f6, which are both all real numbers. And just as a side note, just in case you are already not aware, the cube root of x is the same as saying x to the one-third power. These two things actually say the same exact thing. And same thing with the square root of x. This is the same as saying x to the one-half power. And we'll talk about the properties of exponents in detail later, uh, but in general, the nth root of x is the same thing as saying x to the one divided by n power. Uh, this is usually the transformation between rational exponents and radicals, uh, but we'll talk about this in detail later. Uh, so another special function, I guess you could call it, is going to be x to the two-thirds. So notice that x to the two-thirds is just the same as saying x to the one-third squared. So if we look at the cube root of x function and we square all those numbers, all the positive numbers are going to stay positive, but all the negative numbers are going to become positive as well. So I also leave it to the reader to sort of verify that once you square all those numbers, you're going to get a curve that looks like this, which is almost like a little bird uh, sketch, I guess you could call it. Some people call it the bird graph. Uh, so we have x and y. And of course, uh, 0 to the 2 thirds is going to be 0. So we have the domain of f7 is going to be all real numbers. And the range of f7 is going to be all positive numbers. And that's a result of the squaring process. All right, so another function. Let's call this f8. And this is going to be the absolute value of x function. So remember, the absolute value is the distance from a number to 0. So the absolute value of 0 is 0. The absolute value of 5 is 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5, and so on. So once you sketch all those points on an xy graph, you'll get that the graph of that relation is going to be equal to a v graph. So we can see that the domain of the absolute value function is going to be equal to all real numbers. And the range of the absolute value function is going to be equal to all positive numbers, including 0. Another type of function that we'll discuss is also going to be called the rational function, which is where the variable is located at the bottom. Notice that x cannot be equal to 0 here, so that's going to be part of the domain. So what is going to happen to the graph of this relation? So there's two points that we can easily graph, namely x is equal to 1 and x is equal to negative 1. So when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, and when x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to negative 1. So those points are definitely on this graph there. So when x is getting bigger, 1 divided by a bigger number is going to get smaller, so this function is going to decrease. Uh, let's change my color. So this function is going to decrease down to 0, but it's never going to touch it. Now when x gets really small and less than 1, like 0.5, well that's going to reciprocate to a bigger number. So this curve is going to increase. And you can do the same thing for the negative side. You'll realize that this curve will have that type of pattern. So notice that 
this curve will never hit y is equal to zero as well. So that means y is equal to zero will not be in the range of this relation. So we can see that the domain of this basic rational function is going to be all real numbers except for zero. So we can rewrite that as the left-hand part of the domain, union the right part of the domain. Same with the range. The range is going to be equal to all y values. So this is the bottom part of the graph, and this is the top part of the graph. So another example of a rational function that you may want to look at is 1 divided by x squared. So notice that this function is precisely 1 divided by x, the quantity squared. So it's the same thing as the previous function, but we're squaring all the range values. So all these y values are going to stay positive, and all these negative values are going to become positive, because when you square a negative, it becomes positive. So I leave it to the reader to verify that once you square all those values, you're going to get a curve that looks like this. It's almost like a little mountain or a volcano curve, right? So what would the domain and range of this be? So again, x cannot be equal to zero, so the domain of this relation, f10, is going to be equal to all real numbers except for zero. And the range of this relation is going to be all positive numbers. Again, it didn't include zero before, it's not going to include zero again. Because again, as x gets arbitrarily large, positive or negative, this approaches zero from the top side. So that is the general overview of domain and range of 10 of the basic elementary functions that you will uh, experience. There are other functions such as logarithms, exponentials, and trigonometric functions, and a few others, but we'll get to them later on down the road.